If you're looking to invest in Brisbane between now and the Olympic Games, and then this video is littered and absolutely loaded with gold. In today's video, we're going to look at the most undervalued and underrated suburbs in Brisbane right now, and we're going to break it down to suburbs close to the CBD, the beachside suburbs of Brisbane, and the affordable suburbs with a budget below 600k. At the end of the video, we're also going to share some suburbs where you can buy property for as low as 400k in Brisbane right now. Now, if we kick off with Brisbane CBD, it is really a tale of two cities. There are some suburbs in the CBD of Brisbane, like Hamilton, like West End, that have literally doubled in value or done even better than that in the last 10 years. Then there are other suburbs within sort of that 10 to 15k radius of the CBD that are extremely blue chip that over the same period of time have done literally half the growth of inner city Brisbane in the last 10 years. Now, if we look at the suburbs of Capera, which is 9 k's from the CBD of Brisbane, Arana Hills, which I personally owned in for many years, which is about 10 to 11 k's as the crow flies, Stafford, which is 9 k's, and Everton Park, which is about 8 to 9. These are the suburbs that have been forgotten. Now, the commonality between these suburbs is there are extremely high average household income earners, very, very low vacancy rates and extremely good infrastructure and schools. The average incomes in all of these suburbs are extremely high, averaging between eighty dollars and $120,000 per year. In each of these suburbs, there's three very, very different markets. One is the smaller three-bedroom, one-bathroom, unrenovated, older-style, double-story Queenslanders, which are absolutely right for renovation. There are the high-quality three-bedroom and four-bedroom houses that have been partially renovated. And then there are the beautiful knockdown rebuild houses that people have spent an absolute fortune on and that are reselling. Now, houses in these four suburbs at the moment really range from that $750,000 mark all the way through to 2 million bucks and rent extremely well with some of the lowest vacancy rates in all of Australia right now. I think based on looking back at previous real estate cycles that these four suburbs could be undervalued by the Olympic Games by anywhere as much as 30 to 70% right now and represent great blue chip in a city buying. So I know for me as an investor that I like buying property close to the city of either Sydney, Brisbane, eventually Melbourne, and maybe even Perth one day or on the beaches. Now, many of us post-COVID have a lifestyle orientation to being close to parks, good schools, the water, but a short distance to the CBD as well. Now, there are many, many, many different beachside areas in Brisbane. And like Melbourne, there's not breaking waves, unfortunately. If it was nice as Sydney, then I think Brisbane would have about 15 million people living up here at the moment with the weather and the climate and the lifestyle vibes. But there are extremely undervalued beachside suburbs in Brisbane right now. Now, if we look at the southern side of the city, um, two of the suburbs, Victoria Point and Cleveland, um, that are around about sort of 25 and about 28 kilometres from the CBD, where you can get to work in about 35 minutes at the moment, looks statistically amazing. Again, great average household incomes, very low percentages of renters, but pound for pound from an infrastructure perspective, better than anywhere else in Queensland right now. Now in Cleveland, there's a new project coming on board as we speak, which is a $1.6 billion redevelopment of the foreshore. And just down the road in the suburb next to Victoria Point, there's another $1.4 billion development coming on in Redland Bay. Now, pound for pound, you've got some of the heaviest hitting incomes in all of Brisbane and some of the best school districts. It is extremely undervalued. Now, you can enter this marketplace at the moment for about that 750 to 800k mark into a beautiful brick and tile home, probably walking distance to the beach that rents for somewhere between that $600 and $750 a week mark, or obviously the sky's the limit if you want really, really blue chip stuff. I've worked with many clients from Sydney and Melbourne recently that see the value in houses that would be worth at least 3 million bucks in Sydney or Melbourne, selling in these areas right now for one mil. If we look at the northern side of the city, I personally own property in Margate, extremely high quality, undervalued suburb. You've got the average incomes and the types of people living up there massively changing at the moment. So I've got a number of friends up there, double income earners with kids that either work for somebody else or their own business that earn at least 200K to 300K per year, knocking down and building beautiful brand new houses. There are so many knockdown rebuilds occurring there at the moment, so many renovations. 
And in both of these pockets of the city, based on a recent change to the state government, you can not just add granny flats, but you can now rent them out legally for the next couple of years. So very, very good opportunities, whether you're looking for just growth, something to renovate, a knockdown rebuild, or maybe a house and a granny flat. Now, all of these suburbs were in a recent write-up by the Australian Financial Review, where Australia's seven leading analysts, including four of the major banks, put their hat into the ring to forecast where house prices in these areas could go between now and the 2032 Olympic Games. According to the analysts, they're expecting the average house price in both these areas to go from around about 700k to somewhere between 1.3 and 1.5 mil by the Olympic Games, which says to me that there is strong potential ahead. Now, obviously, as an investor, it's nice to dream about owning inner city property in Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane, as well as beachside property, but not all of us can afford it. So if you've got a budget between that $350,000 and $700,000 mark, then there are extremely good options in North Brisbane, South and West Brisbane right now. Now, kicking things off on the northern side in that middle ring radius, a suburb like Kalanga, Bray Park, or a little bit further up the road, Moray Field, could be an extremely good option. Whether you go for a standalone home on a nice big block of land that's in good condition or something like a townhouse, there is a huge amount of value up there at the moment. It is one of the fastest growing regions in Australia from a population perspective, ridiculous amounts of infrastructure, and like I said a moment ago with the Northern Beaches, some incredible new developments in terms of a new CBD and a lot of density going in up there at the moment. Now, when we look at the southern side of the city, there are some great options that are completely undervalued between 19 and 32 case in the city. Suburbs like Cressmead or Eden's Landing, where I just bought a place for my mum, look extremely good right now. Good average household incomes, which mean people can afford the house prices to continue to rise and rents can continue to rise, great schools, you're not far from the CBD in terms of distance in the car, um, you're looking at about 30, maybe 35 minutes, and then to the Gold Coast for your lifestyle on the weekend, again, depending on traffic, somewhere between 30 and 45 minutes. So incredibly good option. Again, one of the most undervalued pockets of the city statistically. When I look at the long-term growth rates of Brisbane, averaging that 9.7% roughly per annum, um, and then taking these suburbs into account, they've literally done half of that. And when you understand how to interpret that data, generally suburbs that do well in the first half of the cycle or in a short period of time don't do as well after that for a period of time. Suburbs that underperform in the first stage of a cycle generally do much, much better. So if you're looking for value at the moment, both of these areas look exceptional. And then this corridor on the south southwest or southwestern side of the city looks phenomenal as well. Now, Ipswich at the moment is currently 190,000 people, but by the Olympic Games is expected to be 400,000 people. I was talking to an engineer who's a client yesterday. Um, they're doing some modelling at the moment and a proposal for the first fast rail from Ipswich CBD to Brisbane CBD, which is really only 30 minutes. Um, sorry, 30 kilometres. Um, but if they get this through by the Olympic Games, it'll only take 22 minutes from door to door on the train. Um, with the population, the universities out there, and the fact that many, many people are looking to relocate, and also the fact that the state government and the Brisbane City Council has just decided that Ipswich, like Parramatta in Sydney, will become the second CBD and the new CBD of Brisbane there's big, big, big potential out there. So suburbs like Goodna, which is 19 case in the city, or Brazil or Churchill, which are a little bit further away, look really good at the moment. Again, there's your traditional three bedroom, one bathroom or two bathroom unrenovated home. There's some really, really high quality buying out there, whether it's townhouses or houses for between that 350 and 600K mark. Um, and then there's also some houses that people bought sort of five, six, seven years ago that are a house with a two-bedroom granny flat attached that you can buy for below 650 k that rent for as much as 750 to 800 bucks a week at the moment, which are well below replacement value. To wrap things up, I think there are so many suburbs, having looked at 400 of them this year in Brisbane, that look statistically significant and are undervalued at the moment. There are also other suburbs in Brisbane 
that are fully priced in that to me look a little bit wobbly and will continue to go up in value longer term but don't look great in the short to medium term. I think particularly with the Brisbane Olympics coming up, you really want to get a piece of this pie, whether that's blue chip close to the city, blue chip on the beaches or something in that middle ring that's a little bit more affordable. Brisbane caters for all budgets between the 350k mark and the $2 million mark. I think when we look at the longer term history, Brisbane's been great. And with the coming Olympic Games, it looks exceptional right now. Now, for those of you who are interested, I'd love to offer you a one-on-one strategy session. If you're thinking about buying in Brisbane in the next three to 12 months, then jump over to www.pumpedonproperty.com and click that free strategy session button where we can talk about where you are today, where you'd like to be longer term, We can educate you on all of the different options in Brisbane and then you can go and absolutely smash that on your own or maybe become one of the extremely small number of clients we work with each week. But either way, we wish you absolutely all the best on your journey into the Brizzy market. I've got a number of properties up here at the moment having grown up in Sydney and I'm really excited about the potential between now and the Olympic Games. Cheers, guys. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Sweaty, so sweaty. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's so nice, eh? Oh.